unusual inmates of Alcatraz, scandals and intriguing stories. Nestled in the icy waters of San Francisco Bay, Alcatraz wasn't just a prison, it was a repository of the extraordinary and the bizarre. Home to America's most notorious criminals, it also harbored inmates whose stories stretched the boundaries of the ordinary. This video takes you through the lives of 12 such individuals, from gangsters to geniuses, from the ruthless to the wrongly accused. Their tales reveal the untold and intriguing facets of life within the walls of the most infamous prison in American history. Number 1. Clarence Carnes, the Choctaw Kid. Born on January 14, 1927, in Oklahoma, Clarence Victor Carnes became the youngest inmate in the history of Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary. In 1945, at the age of 18, he was convicted of murder during a robbery. He was transferred to Alcatraz in the same year. Carnes quickly found himself involved in some of the most violent events in the prison, including the infamous escape attempt known as the Battle of Alcatraz from May 2 to 4, 1946. Despite his youth and participation in this incident, Carnes was spared the death penalty as he refused to kill hostages during the escape attempt. Number 2. John Paul Scott, the Lard Covered Escapee. John Paul Scott, sentenced to 30 years for bank robbery, is known for his daring escape from Alcatraz on December 16, 1962. He smeared himself with lard to insulate against the cold waters of San Francisco Bay and squeezed through a window to attempt to swim to freedom. Scott became the only person known to have successfully swum from Alcatraz to San Francisco. However, he was found unconscious from hypothermia near the Golden Gate Bridge and was quickly recaptured. Number 3. Robert Stroud, The Birdman's Fictional Feathers Robert Franklin Stroud, born on January 28, 1890, in Seattle, known as the Birdman of Alcatraz, was initially imprisoned for manslaughter in 1909. His interest in ornithology began at Leavenworth Penitentiary, where he raised and studied canaries and other birds, even writing two books on the subject. In 1942, Stroud was transferred to Alcatraz, where he spent 17 years. Contrary to popular belief and cinematic portrayals, he was not allowed to keep birds at Alcatraz, his ornithological studies were conducted at Leavenworth. Stroud died on November 21, 1963, in the Medical Center for Federal Prisoners in Springfield, Missouri. Number 4. Frank Lucas Bolt, Alcatraz's First Inmate Frank Lucas Bolt was the first official inmate at Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary. A queer man convicted of sodomy, Bolt epitomized the era's harsh stance on homosexuality. He arrived at Alcatraz in June 1934, marking the beginning of the prison's long history. This was even before the official opening of Alcatraz as a federal penitentiary, which officially began operations in July 1934. His incarceration highlights the societal and legal challenges faced by LGBTQ individuals during that period. Number 5. Morton Sobel, the Cold War Spy Morton Sobel was incarcerated in Alcatraz as part of a high-profile espionage case during the Cold War. Convicted alongside Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, Sobel was found guilty of spying for the Soviet Union. He began serving his sentence at Alcatraz, where he spent 18 years out of his 30-year sentence. This tenure at Alcatraz underscores the prison's significance during the Cold War era, as it housed inmates considered particularly dangerous or notable. Sobel's case was one of the most famous espionage cases of the 20th century, reflecting the tense political climate of the time. Number 6. Robert Lipscomb, the Intellectual Activist Robert Lipscomb, an African-American inmate at Alcatraz, stood out for his high intellect and his dedication to civil rights activism, particularly in advocating for the desegregation of America's prisons. Despite battling mental health issues, Lipscomb was actively involved in educating his fellow inmates on various subjects. His civil rights activities and intellectual pursuits, however, often led to frequent punishments within the confines of Alcatraz. Lipscomb's story is a poignant example of the struggles faced by African-American inmates and highlights the broader context of racial inequality and civil rights movements within the U.S. prison system. Number 7. Al Capone, the Banjo Player 
Al Capone, the notorious Chicago mob boss, was transferred to Alcatraz in August 1934, becoming one of the prison's earliest and most famous inmates. Before his Alcatraz sentence, Capone was known for manipulating the system in his previous incarcerations, often enjoying certain privileges. However, in Alcatraz, his experience was significantly different. Capone's time at Alcatraz marked a drastic change in his lifestyle, he was no longer able to exert influence or enjoy special treatments. Surprisingly, he became notably cooperative in prison and even indulged in music, playing the banjo in the inmate band known as the Rock Islanders. This period reflected a significant shift from his previous life of luxury and power to a more subdued prison routine. Number 8. 19 Hopi Men, Victims of Cultural Erasure In the late 19th century, 19 Hopi men were imprisoned at Alcatraz, reflecting a tragic episode in American history regarding the treatment of Native American cultures. These men were detained for their resistance to the U.S. government's policy of cultural assimilation, particularly for refusing to send their children to boarding schools that were designed to erase their indigenous heritage. Their incarceration, which began in January 1895, was a part of the broader federal policy aimed at forcing Native Americans to abandon their cultural practices and integrate into American society. The story of these Hopi men highlights the historical efforts to suppress Native American identities and traditions through systematic policies. Number 9. Alvin Creepy Carpus, the longest term inmate. Alvin Creepy Carpus, a notorious criminal and gangster, is known for serving the longest term at Alcatraz. Recognized as public enemy number one by the authorities, Carpus was transferred to Alcatraz in 1936. He spent a total of 25 years on the island, which remained his residence until the prison's closure in 1962. Carpus prolonged incarceration at Alcatraz stands as a testament to the prison's role in housing repeat offenders and high-profile criminals. His long term on the island is indicative of the strict policies and security measures that Alcatraz was known for, especially in dealing with criminals deemed particularly dangerous or notorious. Number 10. James Whitey Bulger, the future mob boss. James Whitey Bulger, who later became a notorious mobster in Boston, served time in Alcatraz during the 1950s and 1960s. Before rising to infamy as a crime figure, Bulger was incarcerated in Alcatraz for bank robbery, a crime he committed in the early 1950s. His stint at Alcatraz, a period marked by strict discipline and isolation, was a formative experience in his criminal career. Bulger, known for his ruthless tactics and later becoming an informant for the FBI, often reflected on his time at Alcatraz as influential in shaping his approach to organized crime. His years in the notorious prison preceded his ascent as one of the most feared figures in the Boston underworld. Number 11. Ellsworth Bumpy Johnson, the Harlem Godfather. Ellsworth Bumpy Johnson, a renowned Harlem crime boss, spent a significant part of his 15-year sentence for drug conspiracy at Alcatraz. Serving time during the 1950s, Johnson was a notable figure in the prison's community. He was rumored to have played a role in the infamous 1962 escape attempt by the Anglin brothers and Frank Morris, although his actual involvement in the escape remains unconfirmed. Johnson's presence in Alcatraz highlights the prison's history of housing some of the most notorious figures in American criminal history. Number 12. Rafael Cancel Miranda, the Nationalist. Rafael Cancel Miranda, a Puerto Rican nationalist, was imprisoned in Alcatraz following his involvement in the 1954 shooting attack on the U.S. House of Representatives. The attack, carried out with fellow nationalists, was intended to draw international attention to the cause of Puerto Rican independence. Miranda's incarceration in Alcatraz symbolized the political tensions of the era between Puerto Rico and the United States. His time in the notorious federal prison underscored the U.S. government's stance towards those it deemed a threat to national security, particularly in the context of political dissent and activism for independence movements. Miranda's story is emblematic of the broader struggle for Puerto Rican self-determination and the complex relationship with the United States. 